and about these uh, nutrient constituents because as we know uh, the acidity and uh, uh, the two big nutrient constituents in uh, Baltic Sea it is not uh, just a problem for Baltic states this needs uh, some systematic solution even uh, among uh, as Baltic as uh, Nordic states. Uh, so uh, Tuli Somets from uh, Estonian Marine Institute. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, so as uh, told, uh, I will talk about mapping nutrients uh, with Sentinel-3 data uh, in marine waters. And by nutrients, I mean total nitrogen and phosphorus. I will also show in what steps of this study SCAP services were used. So, but first, uh, briefly, some uh, words for introduction about Baltic Sea and nutrients. So, because of the specific conditions, Baltic Sea is very sensitive to nutrient enrichment and eutrophication. And eutrophication has been evident for decades already. And it's actually very well known that the open basin of Baltic Sea is nitrogen limited. And especially in spring, when the phytoplankton during the spring bloom is consuming all the nitrogen. And because there is still a lot of phosphorus in the water, Massive blooms of cyanobacteria will develop during the summer with the high temperatures. Because of the spring and summer blooms, the phosphorus and nitrogen loads are a major environmental concern. Now, this slide is dedicated to the introduction of remote sensing that I'm sure most of you don't need. So let's say uh, only this, that remote sensing offers data in the resolutions, which is impossible to achieve within situ measurements. So in this study, uh, Sentinel-3 OLC data archive was used. OLC is built specially for the marine monitoring with specific band placement. If you think remote sensing of water quality, then by far most studied parameter is chlorophyll A, like Krista was uh, talking before, but also transparency and other optically active substances. So optically active means that it, it is changing the spectral characteristics of the light that is captured by the sensor. Now, the thing with nutrients is that they are not optically active. Um, so they will not influence the light and theoretically they could not be detected with optical remote sensing. But our idea and some previous studies already have shown that the nutrients could be correlated with some optically active substances. And this relationship could be used in deriving them. So let's move to our study. Uh, first, uh, about the study area. We chose all Estonian marine territory and divided it into six different geographical regions. The regions are based on the coastal regions of Estonian Water Act. But the difference with our division is that we have included the territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone to the internal waters. So altogether, we are looking approximately 36,500 square kilometers. That is about 10% of uh, the Baltic Sea. Our study area contains uh, 63 different national monitoring in, in situ sampling stations, which measurements we used. 
those stations are all more than one kilometer from the shore to eliminate the possible effect from the coast or the seafloor. So we have over 1,700 in situ measurements for both nitrogen and phosphorus that was done in one meter depth during 2016 to 2021 in those uh, 63 stations by national monitoring program. And we needed to find the satellite data for the same day and location as each of these measurements. For that, we use the SCAR matchup analysis tool. Uh, this will search from the Sentinel-3 archives, the exact matchups. It applies atmospheric correction processor. Uh, we use case two regional coast color for that. And it also applies IDPIX tool for further pixel quality analysis. So we removed all pixels with cloud or other quality flags from further process. And so we ended up with 741 same day cloud free matchups for phosphorus and 719 matchups for nitrogen. So I think that. This is quite an impressive database. Here, uh, I will go over very, very briefly the nutrient retrieval methods. Uh, we use the reflectance spectra of each matchup in 15 different formulas that combined and altered the 15 OLG bands in all possible ways. And in some formulas, we also included the level two products. So altogether, there was over 25,000 algorithms to test. The decision for the best algorithm were uh, based on different statistical parameters of the quadratic polynomial regression model. And in addition to six different geographical regions, we also tested the entire matchup database with all the algorithms uh, on six different temporal divisions. So first period include all data, April to November. The second was uh, May to September, that is agreed in the monitoring program as biologically active period. And third and fourth periods are the traditional way to divide spring and summer between months. And the uh, fifth and sixth periods are the new way to define spring and summer seasons to distinguish the spring bloom from the summer cyanobacteria bloom. I will not uh, uh, show you the results of all the, uh, the temporal divisions, but only the most successful temporal division. That are the two last ones where spring is April to June and summer is July to September. So now finally to the results. Here is the comparison of the derived total nitrogen with the in situ data. So A panel show the results where no geographical regions were used and B panel show the results where the nutrients were derived in all the regions separately. Uh, green rings are spring and orange uh, springs are summer data. And the statistics of the right and the linear regression, that is the black line, are for the combined period. And so for nitrogen, the overall uh, results uh, were relatively good in both cases. So not using any region might be a simple option for fast results. But the phosphorus estimation improves significantly uh, when regions are applied to the data set. Uh, the R2 goes from 0.15 to 0.38. Here the results are shown for each region separately. And you can see that there are significant differences in different uh, regions. 
Uh, but the best results are in R2 and R5 regions. Those are Parano Bay and the Vaina Merisi uh, regions. And in Parano Bay, there is a strong relationship between nitrogen and sedum, which is a, a colored dissolved organic matter, because of the river Parano that brings a lot of dissolved organic matter into the bay. And also in the areas where sedum is lower, the results tend to be also weaker. In addition, we uh, also know that in regions R2 and R5, the nitrogen uh, to phosphorus ratio are higher than 50. That indicates uh, phosphorus uh, deficiency. Especially high is the ratio during the spring period uh, when the uh, nutrients have been estimated the best. So, but let's move on to the spatial and temporal analysis. First, uh, here are two examples of the study area where the algorithms are applied. Uh, but there is a difference in those two images uh, other than one is uh, nitrogen and the other one is phosphorus. On the left, uh, total nitrogen where, uh, is derived with no geographical divisions uh, used, so only one algorithm for the entire area. And on the right, total phosphorus is derived, total phosphorus is derived um, using uh, six different uh, algorithms for each. Um, uh, region. And um, with this method, the spatial variations can have a uh, discontinuity at the borders uh, and uh, of the regions. So therefore, the algorithms of neighboring regions should be blended at the borderline to ensure a progressive transition between the regions. Uh, but uh, this is not an issue when looking at the temporal and spatial means in the region separately. Uh, for this, I used level three processing tool in SCAP uh, for my own created area that uh, include uh, all Estonian marine waters. I entered the algorithm for uh, each region for both nitrogen and phosphorus and excluded the pixels uh, with the cloud or other issues. I did that for each year, for spring and summer separately. In that way, I got the spatial variability for my regions over spring or summer for all five years. Here you can see some of the visuals of this kind of level three processing for Parno Bay. Uh, I have selected two spring uh, and uh, three summer uh, in different years to demonstrate the difference uh, between seasons and also years. So nitrogen concentrations are higher in spring, about 40 to 50 micromole uh, per liter, and lower in summers around 20 to 30, uh, while the phosphorus is acting in the opposite way, being lower in spring and higher in summers. So, and as said before, the high phosphorus concentration can lead to cyanobacteria blooms in the summer. And uh, I have to say that this kind of a seasonal variability were not apparent in all the regions. Uh, but uh, so uh, the derived spatial temporal means of each region of the matchups did not have uh, any or had very little difference with in situ means in both nitrogen and phosphorus concentration. And 
this shows the suitability of remote sensing estimations for the spatial uh, temporal means. And this is important because of the ecological states of the coastal waters are based on spatial temporal means, uh, as it uh, is also in uh, inland waters that Krista was talking about. And um, now uh, here we are looking at the medians of all those Papano Bay pixels in different seasons. So the orange or blue dots are uh, median uh, nutrient concentrations in the bay derived from Olchi data. And then colored area shows the standard deviation. The black uh, axis and uh, the whiskers uh, show all in situ measurements uh, done during that season in Barno Bay uh, with a standard deviation. And you can see that the, the right trend lines agree very well in uh, nitrogen uh, estimation, but in situ estimated trends in phosphorus show more decrease than from remote sensing. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the, the remote, remote sensing median is across the entire bay, while in situ is based only on four different measurement stations in this area. So actually, the in situ here is based on average 17 measurements per season while OLTI is based on 2,400 data points per season. And then on lower, you can see the uh, scatter plots of the same data, uh, data points. Uh, and uh, here you can see that actually the determination coefficients are quite high and are very similar uh, to what we got during algorithm development. Uh, although there is no actual uh, matchups. Now, if you want to think bigger than Perno Bay or even Estonian marine waters, then I can use level three uh, processing for that. Uh, for example, for all uh, Baltic Sea area. So here, uh, for example, I apply the general total nitrogen uh, algorithm with no regions to the entire Baltic Sea area. And here are the examples for the monthly means uh, for total nitrogen in April and August 2021. And uh, here we see that the nitrogen concentration can be slightly higher in August than, than in April, except then in uh, coastal areas and uh, Gulf of Finland and Gulf of Riga. And if you would be interested in a specific date, not the temporal means, uh, to get, uh, for example, better overview of the spatial variability, then just the mosaicing option uh, could be used. Here is example of uh, 22nd of April for 2020. And, uh, but uh, let's uh, wrap up. So, Overall, the estimation of nutrients uh, is very challenging with remote sensing data because nutrients are not directly impacting the spectral properties of the light that is detected by the remote sensing. And uh, given that, we got quite satisfying results, especially for nitrogen and Bernoulli. And the deficiency of phosphorus seemed to have a positive influence on the accuracy of the nutrient detection. So we may say that deriving nitrogen from OLC data is realistic in all Estonian marine waters throughout the vegetation period, 
but phosphorus estimation should be taken more cautiously, uh, except in Parno Bay, Baltic proper area of West Estonia and Paina Meresi, where the results uh, were satisfying. So uh, this algorithm development presented today is published in Remote Sensing Journal in March 2020. And uh, I thank you for listening. Uh, thank you uh, for a uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, do we have uh, questions? But I have one. Uh, uh, do you also have informed, uh, for example, Estonian uh, agricultural authorities about uh, your results of uh, nitrogen and uh, phosphorus uh, inside? Uh, as Estonian uh, coastal zones? Uh, I have not, but uh, the, the co-authors of this uh, study is uh, the ones who are doing the national monitoring program. Uh, so maybe they will communicate it be uh, better ways. Okay, thank you. But never, nevertheless, uh, quite interesting result to get from remote sensing uh, uh, these uh, conclusions.